In Assassin's Creed 2, you play as Ezio Auditore de Firenze, a young member of the Florentine aristocracy. While Ezio and his family are fictional, the people you meet, places you visit, and cities you explore in Assassin's Creed 2 are grounded in the reality of the 15th century Italian Renaissance. At the center of all of this was the city of Florence. It's here, caught up in the beauty, grandeur, and greed of the Renaissance that Assassin's Creed 2 begins. Join us as we explore and learn about the most important people and sites throughout the city. And remember, if you're looking to visit or revisit Ezio's Florence, you could sign up for Uplay Plus and get access to Assassin's Creed 2 along with more than 100 other Ubisoft titles. Our first stop along our tour of Florence is the city's massive Cathedral of Santa Maria del Fiore. The building is commonly referred to as the Duomo, which means cathedral. Florence's cathedral set the standard in terms of sheer size and engineering innovation of its time. The project was begun in 1296 by an architect named Arnolfo de Cambio and wasn't finished until 1436, 140 years later. The Duomo was overseen by more than 10 different architects, two of which, Giotto de Bandoni and Francesco Talenti, constructed the nearby Campanile. Talenti, who overtook the project after the Black Death halted construction in 1348, expanded the size of the cathedral with the sole purpose of ensuring that Florence's cathedral would be larger than those of rival cities Pisa and Siena. As it turns out, size and pettiness were pretty important during the Renaissance. The building was almost too ambitious. While a majority of the cathedral had been finished by the beginning of the 15th century, the dome had yet to even begin construction because the cathedral was so big that no one could figure out how to build the damn thing. Eventually, an architectural design competition was held to find someone capable of executing the dome. A man named Filippo Brunelleschi won the competition in 1420. He invented a self-supporting double shell structure and wrapped the supports in chains to brace them. In 1436, construction was complete on what was at the time the world's largest dome. While you're taking in the cathedral, be sure to appreciate the facade, because Ezio never would have been able to. Despite its long construction time, hosts of architects, and importance as the city's major cathedral, Florence's Duomo was left without its signature facade until the late 19th century, when Florence became the capital of the Kingdom of Italy, more than 400 years after the cathedral was consecrated. While the dome of the Duomo may have been Brunelleschi's most famous contribution to Florence's skyline, it's hardly the only mark he left on the city. He also designed the Church of San Lorenzo, the patron church of the Medici, the most powerful family in Florence and arguably all of Italy in the 15th century. The Medici rose to power in Florence as a wealthy banking family in the early 15th century. During Ezio's time, the head of the family was a man named Lorenzo di Medici. As the de facto leader of Florence, Lorenzo employed some of the era's greatest artists and help elevate Florence to one of the most culturally influential cities of the Renaissance. While history remembers the Medici kindly, their influence and power was seen as a threat by other Florentine nobles. During Easter Sunday services at the Duomo on April 26, 1478, the rival Pazzi family attempted to assassinate Lorenzo and his brother Giuliano. Lorenzo managed to survive the attack, but Giuliano was stabbed to death in front of an audience of thousands. The unsuccessful coup made martyrs of the Medici brothers, turning the city against the rival Pazzi conspirators. Francesco. While the Duomo was the city's religious center, its civic center was the Palazzo Vecchio, originally referred to as the Palazzo della Signoria. Despite its traditionally rough medieval appearance, the building was actually begun after the Duomo and even had the same original architect Arnolfo di Cambio. The off-center tower was the result of DiCambio incorporating a pre-existing tower into the new building's facade. As they say, if it ain't broke, don't tear it down and build it again. Unlike the Duomo, which was designed after the delicate, light, gothic style, the Palazzo Vecchio was intended to portray a heavy, solid medieval structure. Florence was frequently at odds with rival cities, and even the Vatican itself, and the Palazzo Vecchio was constructed to illustrate the strength of the Florentine Republic, with its rough, rusticated facade and crenellated battlements. Underneath the arches are a series of nine painted coat of arms meant to represent the Florentine Republic. Ezio, I think I figured out how to make a man fly. Of course, you can't talk about the Italian Renaissance without discussing the epitome of a Renaissance man, 
Leonardo da Vinci. While Assassin's Creed 2 players know Leonardo as Ezio's gadget-making, codex-decoding friend, in reality, Leonardo was many things, including a painter, sculptor, architect, scientist, engineer, and much more. He was far ahead of his time in a wide variety of fields. But because of his wide range of intellectual pursuits, Leonardo wasn't especially prolific in many fields. While only a few of his paintings remain, what we have left are some of the world's most iconic, including the Mona Lisa and the Last Supper. While his drawing of the Vitruvian Man is one of the most recognizable sketches in history, and represents what Leonardo believed to be ideal human proportions. In real life, hospitals in Florence, Rome, and Milan allowed him to dissect and study human corpses. That likely means that having a friend with as high of a body count as Ezio would certainly have been beneficial to Leonardo's studies of human anatomy. I filled your blade with a bit of poison to start with. Should you run out, just visit a doctor. Poison? From a doctor? In high enough doses, that which cures can kill. Elsewhere in Florence, be sure not to miss the Church of Santa Maria Novella, which contains Masaccio's Holy Trinity fresco, one of the earliest examples of Renaissance linear perspective in painting, signaling the unity of art and science. It's also the site of the first religious attacks on Galileo, whose scientific discoveries were viewed as a threat to the church. Across the city lies the Basilica of Santa Croce, another addition to the Florentine skyline by our friends the Cambio and Brunelleschi. As the principal Franciscan church in Florence, Santa Croce was the burial site of some of the world's most famous Italians, including Michelangelo, Galileo, and Machiavelli. We've only just scratched the surface of the history of Florence, and thanks to the in-game database, you can discover more about the city for yourself. Not to mention the game's other major locations, like San Gimignano and Venice. Assassin's Creed 2 is available on Uplay+, Plus, so if you'd like to learn more, sign up and explore the Renaissance. For more videos like this, subscribe to our channel and visit us at news.ubisoft.com.